Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Um, so I've been asked, are you ever gonna do a wildlife painting? And I've been asked to do rosette spoonbills. And uh, so today we might get a chance to do not only a spoonbill, but as well, we might be doing uh, uh, an egret. So, uh, you know, here we are in South Florida. It's uh, hot and humid, but we're gonna get through this. We're gonna be doing this painting in oils. And also, I would like to say thank you to all of you for helping me grow this channel. And I want to give a big shout out and thank you to David Stinson for donating uh, generously to my channel. Uh, I thank you guys. I, you know, it's because of you I'm able to grow this channel and do more and more for you. So, you know, I'm a one-man band, but I'm trying to do the best I can for you guys. So uh, let's get to the painting and uh, let's see what we can achieve today. So let me show you guys what I have on my palette today. So I changed the layout a little bit to see if it's gonna help you guys make it a little bit easier with uh, my mixing. Um, I have a nine by 12 uh, canvas paper, basically. You can find them anywhere at all the art stores. Uh, it's just for the purpose of this demonstration. It's not a painting that I'm gonna sell. It's just, you know, to show you guys how to do the paintings. Um, also on my palette here are the colors of cadmium. Cad yellow medium, um, yellow ochre, cad red light, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and white. Um, I may not use all these colors. I just put them out there just for, you know, in case. So I don't have to be digging around for more paint. Also, I have my cleaner slash, uh, this is Gamsol that's in here. I'm gonna use that to thin my paint as well. I'm not gonna be using any linseed or any drying agents such as Liquin or Galkid. This is just for demonstration purpose. Uh, I want the paint to dry very fast. And with this weather out here, it's gonna dry pretty fast. So that's what I'm gonna be using as my medium just to accomplish this painting for you. Okay, so as you can see here, <clears throat> I drew out the picture and um, with some yellow ochre um, and I used a little bit of the Gamsol to dilute my paint and pretty much dry. So that's how quick it works. Uh, I barely was out of here five minutes. I just sketched it in with uh, some um, Gamsol and it dried really quick. I just need a basic sketch. That's all I need. I don't need very much of a drawing. And uh, also another part of the arsenal Mosquitoes were having a freaking buffet on my legs. So don't forget to get buck sprays if you're going to be painting down here in Florida for sure. It doesn't matter what time of the year it is. These rat bastards are all over the place. Anywho, so uh, let's start. Um, somewhere on your screen, I will put a reference photo of the bird. Uh, I'm gonna be doing by memory because I don't have the photo in front of me. I'm just I'm just gonna go by you know uh, what I remember from the picture. So here we go. I'm gonna be using uh, Filbert. This is a number two. This is by Princeton. It's a poly. Um, it's a it's a catalyst poly tip bristle brush. And it's a filbert number two they're great brushes what i like about these brushes you could put a lot of paint on these things and they're, they're just like great all right so let's go so first i'm going to start out with some alizarin crimson so let me add a little bit of medium not too much don't go crazy with the medium all you need is a little bit to dilute all right so a little bit of crimson Why I went with crimson first is because crimson has a little bit of blue in it, almost a little bit of pur so it's got it's a little bit on the blue side, so it has a little bit of this purplish tinge, and I just love it when I paint the birds. All right, I'm just putting a thin coat on. Uh, let me. That's why I didn't use 
the cad light so let me also go with crimson again go for the darker area as well maybe a little bit of burnt umber as well I'm not worried about making a painting very tight and what I mean by making a painting very tight is that I'm not worried about details yet all I want to do is get the main players on the field and we're gonna have a game after that So I put a um, medium value, a mid value color over here. I didn't want to go too dark right away. I didn't want to go too light either because it would be hard to put darks over light colors, um, especially if it's not dry. So the best thing for to do at this point is to, because uh, I'm still kind of judging my values, go with the mid tone color, okay, mid value and work off of that like by putting your darks afterwards or you know next to it and you could work like that um because it's not going to be too far off the darks where you need to be and by the time the painting dries and tacks up a little bit you could go on and add darker darker colors so this is basically just to help me judge uh how dark or how light my colors are going to be so it's basically all i'm doing i'm not i'm not going for too darks or too light right away so let me go Yellow ochre. This brush is kind of fat for what I need to do, but sorry, we'll work around it. We'll, this is going to be very like impressionistic um, style painting. So, and we're going to put shadows and all that good stuff afterwards. And I toned the canvas on this one. Um, because then I'll be able to see where my bright colors are going to be versus if I just left the canvas white. Um, and you can see this is not very bright yet. This is just going to be like a mid-tone um, mid color, light color, highlight. And then uh, I'm going to work off of that as well afterwards. So another thing here. All right. So now let's switch up the brushes and start working a little bit more. Now I have enough information here. All right. So here I'm going to have... Spoonbills typically have this like, these nice markings here on their wings. See, this is already pretty much dry. That's just from using the Gansol, which is um, odorless mineral spirit. Mineral spirit. It's one of the best ones on the market, and the reason that behind that is it has a low evaporation rate. Not to say that's not that's better, better for you. I mean, good for your health. Any kind of solvent's not good, but it's the best one on the market, which doesn't. Um, evaporate as quick and safest for classrooms and whatnot all right so let me add a little bit of that here as well transition color
blend these colors a little bit together. So we're gonna have the sun coming from this direction. I'm using this um, cad red light which has a little bit of yellow into it in the mix and that's why I'm using it to show this maybe a little bit more definition over here. I'm still working thin, that's why some of the stuff you see is just like Just moving the wing over a little bit I think I went a little bit too far back I'm here I'm putting some almost pure alizarin crimson here So that's the wing obviously furthest back, just giving it some color here. I'm going to define this uh, forward uh, wing here just a little bit more. Alright, so now Let's start working on edges of the wings here again not being too careful here it's very like impressionistic as a matter of fact you know what I'm gonna paint the outer area perimeter of this bird so you get like a better sense of <clears throat> the painting so let's go you know since i have a lot of red there let's go for something a little bit uh, let's go a little bit greenish of some kind Just to tone down that green a bit.
green and red of course are complements of each other if I plop into this it's gonna dry quick anyway again remember I'm only using odorless mineral spirits as my medium to move this paint around okay so now as you can see the bird is starting to show up a little bit more right now that I got this background up so got that established um, let's work on those wings a little bit this is a number two filbert cheap little brush but it does its work it's from uh, artist law if you could get those at Michaels um, they're synthetic works really well when I want to make some sharp edges so let's make some edges for those wings here. Remember to clean your brush intermittently, okay? Look at that, mosquitoes are already on my... Of all things that could have been created on Earth, did mosquitoes really have to be one of them? Seriously. Just give indication of those wings there. Maybe I might go a little bit darker here. I'm using this cad red light here because it has some orange tone to it, some uh, yellow in there a little bit. Give it some little bit of orange reflection on these wings a little bit more. I'm going to give these individual wings a little bit more definition as well. Let's go by using a little bit of this purplish, dirty purple here.
Let me accentuate that white a little bit more. Now I'm going really a little bit thicker. I'm not even using any mediums here. Just going stripping, stripping, ah, dipping straight in a, in a white here. So if I was in the field, this is what I would do. Keep the painting fresh. All right, let's work on this wing here a little bit. A little bit of white. start working on you know hold on let me just fix the back of this bird here a little bit more Just to give, show a little bit of tail here. There you go. One stroke is all it took. Let's work on the highlights here. Maybe a little bit of yellow. To warm things up a bit. Now I'm using the paint a little bit thicker. some of this dirty mix for the shadows of the bird. There you go. And you can see it's starting to define some of the white and the light colors here. <clears throat> so if you find that your lights are not, are not light enough, that means the color around it are not dark enough. If your lights are just blending into the background, because your background is not dark enough. So uh, that's one thing. It's a good way to judge your painting. It's like, uh, why is everything like just blending in? You know. So and I could show, make this even wider 
not by adding more white but my making the background darker. So let me show you an example of that. Let me just finish the head real quick and then we'll move on to that tidbit. So it's going to be hard with the camera in front of me like this, but let me try. could always fix that after I could use a liner for that if I was really gonna do a painting but this is just for demo purposes Like I said a few minutes ago, this may not look uh, too light for you yet, but watch now what I do. I'm going to show you that, you know, you need light to show dark and dark to show light. So, you know what, hold on, let me fix one more thing I want to do here. There you go. You see? That made it lighter over here. Makes it look like it's a lot lighter. So now, let's go and make this green greener. Darker. Watch what happens. And put a good amount of paint. You see how the lights are popping out more now than what they were earlier? I could adjust this wing while I'm at it. Here, make it a darker green here. So remember, if your light colors are just blending into the background, it's because your background is not dark enough. Because I'm, I was almost using like pure white, you know, and it still is not showing up. So that means whatever background I was doing, I had to make it darker. You know? watch see that do you also see that mosquito that just landed on my hand freaking relentless I'm using less medium I'm using meaning I'm using less uh, gamsol here as I'm painting over I can feel it tacking up so now you saw how we progressed from the color was almost kind of blending into the background 
Okay, and you were thinking, well, that's not white enough. Well, initially I started with the mid-tone green and I was able to judge my color and go darker. Okay, so I knew my background needed to be a little bit darker. So that's how sometimes when you have a painting that everything just looks flat and all the colors are just like blending in too much, there's no contrast. Well, you have to adjust your lights and your darks, all right? If you want your highlights to come up more, I mean, you can't go any more white than white. I mean, that means that you need to make your background or whatever surrounding colors around here to be darker than your light. That's a trick, all right? It's not a secret. You need dark to make light, light to make dark, to show dark, I'm sorry. It just depends on how you use it. So, uh, just for the hell of it, let me just fix those wings a little bit more. Yeah, that Gamsol just like... Dry it up pretty quick. There you go. Let me work on that beak a little bit more. Kind of hard with this angle that I'm at. I guess you can see it now, right? I'm throw an eye in there. We're not gonna let this bird fly blind, right? Let's give him some legs. So at least he'll have a safer landing. Put some medium on that. Not gliding very well. There you go. He's got legs now. Let me. Cause I'm a little bit being a little bit nitpicky here. I just added some medium. I just want to there you go. Looks like a bird to me. I don't know about you guys. Or actually, should I say it looks like a spoonbill to me? Let's give him some markings. There you go, folks. You got yourself a spoon, Bill. Let's go with some bright red accents here. Yeah, I like that. Let's 
soften it up a little bit. So you got yourself a bird. It took me about, what, 35 minutes to do this? But of course, if I was gonna do it in full painting, different story, right? So that is your spoonbill, folks. Hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, thank you again for watching. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to uh, paint a spoonbill. Unfortunately, I know I said at the beginning of the video, I might do two birds for you guys. Uh, I'm going to have to save that egret for another time. Uh, it's getting dark a little bit right now, and the mosquitoes are just being relentless and chewing me up over here. So even though I put bug spray, I don't know, those no seams are all over the place. So um, just a thing that you have to live with in Florida. Um, so if you guys have any questions about the technique that I use or any of the mediums or colors or what have you, just put them in the comments. I'll, you know, get back to you as soon as possible and answer your questions. I'm always happy to answer questions for you guys. So uh, hopefully the next time I'll have another video for you, but this time we're going to do the egret, okay? And uh, maybe another time we'll do a heron and uh, maybe another one's going to be a black, a Florida black bear. Who knows? Um, but thank you again, all you guys. Thank you for your support and uh, put your comments down below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification button. So every time there's a new painting that comes up, you'll get to know about it as soon as possible. Thank you again, you guys. Appreciate all the support.